so this the last time we had class via zoom for figure drawing and we went over some anatomy notes and a couple of people said hey is this video going to be available and i said i didn't think to record this zoom so instead i'm uh, re-recording this lecture so i'm going to do 10 minutes as a review of anatomy stuff for this upcoming first quiz and then 10 minutes on the introduction to anatomy content for the second quiz. So for this first video, um, some of the things that you need to know, you need to know, let's see if we can see my cursor, you need to know the major bones of the body and that includes the rib cage, um, the cranium, the pelvis, the um, vertebral column or the spinal column, and then you also need to know the major bones of the limbs, so that would be uh, the humerus, the radius, and the ulna on the arm. Uh, make sure you know the difference between um, which one is the ulna and which one is the radius, the femur, the tibia, and the fibula. And then besides that, you also need to know the clavicle and, um, and the scapula and, oh, the patella. And those are all the major bones that you need to know. Besides that on the test, and I have a couple of um, different versions. This is basically a repeat of the notes that I handed out, so if you want, but you can look at these in more depth to maybe help you understand what you're looking at. Besides that, two other important informations that you need to know for the test is you need to know the four curves of the spine as seen here on this diagram. So we have the cervical uh, curve, the uh, thoracic curve, the lumbar curve, and then the sacral curve, and the sacral curve is made up almost entirely of the sacrum. And you also need to know for the test the difference between, when it comes to the rib cage, you need to know the difference between um, true ribs and false ribs and floating ribs. So to start with floating ribs, they're pretty easy to define. Floating ribs are ribs that do not attach um, via cartilage or any other means, do not attach, attach to the sternum. True ribs are ribs that attach to the sternum where each rib has a single piece of cartilage that attaches it directly and does not share any cartilage with any other rib, a single piece of cartilage that just attaches that one rib to the sternum. The false ribs are the ribs that all are attached by a shared piece of, um, of cartilage. Okay, so there you go. That's the definition. Besides that, we also studied uh, some some anatomy terms, not all of these on this list. The most important ones that you need to know are medial and lateral, anterior, posterior, superior, inferior. Um, deep and superficial also might come up. Um, we also discussed supine and prone. We also we discussed this list. The two most important ones you need to know because they come up a lot are spine and crest. Um, but all the other ones, there are there's a difference between you know, the group, the condyle, and the epicondyles versus the tubercle and tuberosity. But mostly, from your, right now, all you need to know is that they all basically refer to some kind of bump on a bone. Um, and we also studied, in terms of terms for uh, muscles, we studied flexors and extensors. We discussed what those, the differences between those. Um, we discussed, in terms of muscles, um, head, the belly, but also origin and insertion. And we also discussed fascia and we talked about, and it almost certainly be an extra credit question having to do with where does the word fascia come from? Okay. And then we also discussed types of joints. Uh, first of all, all the joints that we discussed are synovial joints. And we have a nice diagram here that kind of helps you understand what a synovial joint is. It is a fluid-filled joint or a fluid-surrounded joint. Um, and here we have one diagram showing one way of kind of visualizing the different types of joints. But we also have this page. You need to know and be able to define and or draw a picture for um, at least two of the joints. Most people go with um, a hinge joint and a saddle joint or a ball and socket joint as the three of those, I think, are most kind of clearly understood both what they are and how they're different from the other joints. Like the ellipsoid joint is kind of hard to figure out how it's different from a ball and socket joint. 
Okay, and that pretty much, this last page is mostly just more about understanding the mechanics of muscles. That pretty much covers everything that you need to know for the test. Um, and now I need to figure out how to end this lecture because I think it's F something, but I can't remember which one. I will.